Army bombers loading up for patrol duty over the Caribbean. Bombers guarding the supply lanes of the West Indies. Guarding the oil tankers, bringing the black gold from the Americas to the United Nations. Aruba, the world's largest refineries, are protected by the Dutch and by the Americans. Refineries of one field alone, producing more oil than any controlled by the Axis. Today, U.S. reinforcements are guardy foot of these vital West Indies, for this was the scene of the first attack on the Western Hemisphere, an attack made by a lone submarine, soon blasted from the water by the guns and bombs of the protecting forces. A California hospital turns in the fire alarm. They're testing a new device to evacuate patients in an emergency, in a hurry. The equipment carried on the truck is a fireproof Kansas chute that can be installed in windows up to the fourth floor. Everything ready. Patients afraid to jump into a net are rescued. 18 to 20 a minute, just like this. and the cameraman proves it's as easy as rolling off a log. It took a regimented Germany years to train her new army. But these youngsters, every one a free citizen and an individual American, are responding to the toughest training schedule ever devised. Training under fire, live bullets whistling overhead as they slide beneath barbed wire. For these are men of the U.S. Army's new division known as Tank Destroyers. With rapid-fire machine guns, they learn the technique of street fighting, house to house. And here are the pincers they manned. Weapons designed to knock out the toughest land battleships known to modern warfare. harvest time in the great cotton fields of the deep south. And an abundant crop it is this year, too. Just to celebrate the wind-up of the season, planters arrange a contest to see which picker can pick the most cotton within a two-hour period of time. The referee's flag goes down, and now to judge the winner. Each bag is weighed, the picking sorted and graded for cleanliness and quality. To the champion goes the first prize award, $1,001 bills. And is he happy? <laughs> to the new aircraft carrier Lexington, the U.S. Navy passes on the fighting traditions of the old. Sailor heroes who served in her gallant namesake are guests of honor as the sponsor says, And the new ship is sent down the ways by the same woman who christened the old Lexington 17 years ago. A full 12 months ahead of schedule, the mighty carrier speeds on her way to join the fleet. The strangest supply line of the war. New Guinea Bushmen delivering supplies, arms, ammunition, to one of the outposts of the United Nations global conflict. An overnight camp, 
70 miles upstream from Port Moresby. Entire villages enlisting with the cause of the Australians and the Americans who've come to help them. Spanning mountains, trekking across deep ravines on perilous makeshift bridges, men and women carriers struggle for seven days through steaming jungles to help get supplies through to beat the Japs. In Sydney Harbour, Australians inspect a Japanese submarine that ventured too far from home. Its mechanism almost intact, the midget undersea craft never had a chance to discharge its torpedoes. Here are the tubes. Removing the firing mechanism. Dangerous business. It might explode. The torpedo's gyroscope, an ingenious device that directs the course of the torpedo after it leaves the submarine. This is one marauder that did no damage. Australians blasted it with depth bombs. Now putting to sea with U.S. attack forces bound for Japanese-held islands in the South Pacific. An Australian cruiser is part of the escort. Running into heavy seas, the convoy plows along. A lookout spots our objective, a Japanese base. Fire control ready, powder room ready. In every warship, it's general quarters. Crews are at battle stations. Calm, disciplined veterans, they're ready to throw hot steel at the first command to fire. Films made just before a sunrise attack that takes the Japs completely by surprise. Opening guns of the American offensive in the South Pacific. Shore installations are ablaze. From the fire control room, keen eyes record Navy marksmanship. Salvo after salvo rips into the beach. And behind the barrage, landing boats are taking in the Marines. Escort cruiser, the Australian, is mortally hit. But ashore, U.S. Marines checked the damage inflicted upon the enemy. A strong garrison held the base. Those who could get away fled to the hills. These remained. Roundup of captives, a lone Marine in charge. Waiting for removal to a distant camp, they'll be confined under the international treaties covering prisoners of war. Captured Japanese officers, these are just the first. There are more where they came from. The Americans are on the offensive.